Philadelphia's Academy of Natural Sciences has a collection of over 1.5 million fish. Some of these samples are skeletons, some are cleared and stained, but most are whole organisms held eternally in glass jars. Some of the liquid specimens are over 200 years old. They are preserved in either alcohol or formalin to keep the organisms from degrading. These primary type specimens, which define their species, are labeled with a red ribbon, while the secondary types are labeled with blue ribbons. Kyle Lukenville is in charge of photo documenting the Academy's 3,000 primary type fish specimens. Um, our type collection is one of the richest in the, in the New World. Um, the, the European collections have, have more specimens just because they were, they were doing this work longer than we have here in the U.S. Um, but our, our type collection dates back to the, to the early 1800s, so we've got a lot of very important, uh, very old specimens here. And um, because preservation techniques weren't what they are today, um, these specimens do degrade over time. Because these specimens can degrade over time, it's important that we get a record of, of what they look like uh, currently um, before they degrade more. Uh, so what we're doing is photographing all of our, our type material, at least the, the primary types, the, the secondary types we may photograph at a, at a later date, but the primary types are the most important right now as they're the, the name-bearing specimens. Um, and then we're taking these specimens and also doing x-rays uh, because those x-rays are, are important because these, uh, these specimens, like I said before, do degrade over time and they will decalcify as time goes on. So it's, as time goes on, it's, it's tougher to get a good x-ray of those fish. To take a good x-ray of the fish, Kyle props it up on a small piece of polyfill, trying to get it as horizontal as possible. The tiny fish Kyle is x-raying is the primary type specimen of the species Crisiptera punctactopercular, a reef fish found in tropical waters, which was collected in 1946. On the other side of the lead shielded door, Kyle takes the digital x-ray of the tiny fish with a click of a mouse, much quicker than the hours it takes to develop film x-rays. Um, but we have discovered some, some cool things with the x-rays, you know, finding you know, the fish's last meal in there and um, also documenting some things that, that happen with specimens over time. We didn't really plan an exhibit with, with, the, uh, with the project, but it was one of those things where it was sort of a no-brainer. You know, we've got, you're, we're producing all these images and it's, a, it's an easy and inexpensive thing to put together and something that's going to be very interesting to the public, so it, it only makes sense to, to put it on display. And since we have to take the pictures anyway, you know, why not? it's just you know the, for the general public you know when you see an X, when you think of an x-ray you think of you know the x-ray you got when you broke your wrist you know you're not thinking of an x-ray of a fish that you know not only have you never seen the skeleton of this fish but you've never you may never even 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 seen this type of fish before um, so and not being familiar with you know fish anatomy and things like that it's it's always always interesting kind of piece, piece people's interests Thank you.